If a ship hoisted black colors, you knew they were pirates. It was a flag able to strike fear into anyone, thanks to its grim implications of violence, rape and murder. Nowadays we see it as a sort of silly thing, but back then, pirates and their flags were generally terrifying. For the pirates, it was an effective way of scaring enemies into submission, without the loss of lives or equipment. Most pirates just used a black flag with skull and bones, or a plain black flag. The color alone was enough to signal their true intentions. However, some pirates designed their own flags. It's usually believed they were used as a calling card of sorts, so the merchants knew what pirate captain was attacking them. But at a distance, it's really hard to read the details on a flag, so I really think that unique flags were more so an internal mark of identity for the pirate crew. Few pirate crews had as strong an identity as the crew of Bartholomew Roberts. Roberts was like a hero to them. They would offer him gifts and bark at prisoners what a great pirate he was. It is no surprise then that a crew as strongly knit as this one would design their own colors. However, whilst most pirates had just one unique flag, Roberts has 12 flags attributed to him. But did he really design all of those flags himself? In this video we'll be taking a look at all of those flags attributed to Bartholomew Roberts, their meaning and their plausibility. Before I talk about the fake flags attributed to Roberts, I need to discuss what I mean by fake flag. I consider a pirate flag to be real or historical, if it has been described by an eyewitness from the period. This means that we have a very limited knowledge about what pirate flags actually looked like, especially considering how vague the accounts are. But vagueness is just pirate history in a nutshell. And as far as we know, there are no surviving archaeological examples of pirate flags from the period, aka the early 1700s. Anyway, this means that an imaginary or fake pirate flag is a flag that cannot be traced to the period. This means that most of the well-known pirate flags are fake, since they originate from the 20th century. Flags like Blackbeard's Skeleton Devil or John Rackham's Crossed Swords can only be traced to a magazine scene from the 1910s, that's 200 years after the Golden Age of Piracy. Any historian that has seriously researched pirate flags, such as E.T. Fox and Benus and Little, agree that these flags are modern inventions. But hey, I'm still going to get comments saying that we don't know what flags pirates flew, so they might as well have used those flags. Or, there is no evidence saying that they didn't. Judging by that logic, Blackbeard might as well have hoisted a pink vagina and called it a day. One of the most popular flags associated with Bartholomew Roberts shows the man himself holding a glass of rum and toasting a skeleton. The skeleton either symbolizes death or Satan. Roberts toasting the skeleton would mean that he welcomed death with open arms and had no fears of him. Some say that because Roberts didn't drink alcohol, this flag is fake. But Roberts did drink alcohol. He has been recorded as drinking small beer, and once he stole a corkscrew. Hardly necessary if you don't drink rum or wine. However, this toasting flag isn't real. It originates from volume 29 of the Mariner's Mirror, published in 1943 in an article about pirate flags, which described Roberts as toasting death. This description is based on a faulty interpretation of this flag, which shows Roberts and Skellington holding an hourglass together. The meaning of this flag is that, between Roberts and death, your time is running out. This flag appeared first in the Blackwall Frigates, published in 1922. However, the color plate was inspired by an illustration from the second edition of A General History of the Pirates, published first in 1724, aka right at the end of the Golden Age. But does that make the illustration an credible source? A general history of the pirates holds a dodgy position for anyone trying to research pirates. A lot of its information can be corroborated by eyewitness accounts and archaeology, but some of it can easily be dismissed as flat-out lies. It is as much a romanticized novel as it is a historical source. The illustrations featured in the general history should be taken with a huge pinch of salt. These were made by European artists who had never seen the pirate flags, let alone encountered a real pirate, maybe except for watching a hanging. These were the same artists that depicted Blackbeard as wearing a fur cap, or Charles Vane with a wig. These sort of headpieces were popular in contemporary London, but in the Caribbean you would have died of a heat stroke. So did Roberts use a flag depicting himself and the skeleton holding an hourglass? Since there are no written descriptions of this flag, it was most likely invented by the illustrator. A general history does feature some written descriptions of pirate flags used by Roberts. The most famous one describes how Roberts, having developed such a grudge against the governor of Barbados and Martinique, designed and hoisted a new jack which depicted his own figure portrayed standing upon two skulls, and under them the letters ABH and AMH 
signifying a Barbadian's and the Martinican's head. Later on, a journal history described how Roberts modified the flag by giving himself a flaming sword in his hand. Whilst this is an entertaining story, there exist no other sources that verify the existence of this flag or its usage by Bartholomew Roberts. I'd like to believe that the unknown author got it from an eyewitness, which isn't impossible at all, but it might also be an embellishment to make a more dramatic story. For example, the author wrote that Roberts managed to capture and execute the governor of Martinique, finally getting his revenge. But historians today sadly consider this story to be fictional. A general history described the head's flag as being a jack. Jacks were small, square-shaped flags that were flown from the jack staff at the bowsprit, as in, at the front of the ship. Interestingly enough, the first edition of a general history showed this flag with the cross of St. George in its canton. This cross was the national flag of England, and was often used by pirates not only to show their nationality, but as a show of defiance against modern Great Britain. This variation was removed in later editions. In the period, ships flew a national flag called an ancient at the back of the ship, and a jack at the front. Commissioned warships and privateers flew a pendant, meaning a long, triangular and often forked flag. The combination of colors about a commissioned ship were referred to as ancient, jack and pendant. Roberts, like all pirates, wished to imitate the navy and privateers. According to a general history, he entered the slaving port of Widda in the following fashion. They came to Widda with the St. George's ensign, a black silk flag flying at their mizzen peak, and a jack and pendant of the same. The flag had a death in it, with an hourglass in one hand, and a crossbones in the other, a dart by it, and underneath a heart, dropping three drops of blood. Flags were typically made from cotton, so the idea of Roberts using a black silk flag is very interesting. Anyway, there are no other accounts that describe this flag being used by Roberts. If a general history is to be believed, Roberts had not only a thing for depicting himself on his flags, but also flaming swords. After Roberts' last battle, the book described how one of his flags were trapped under a fallen mast and recovered by the navy. It had the figure of a skeleton in it, and a man portrayed with a flaming sword in his hand, intimating a defiance of death itself. Whilst Roberts did indeed have his mainmast and mizzen topmast shot down, no other account exists to verify the existence of this flag. When researching pirate flags, eyewitness accounts aren't always very helpful in the details. Pirate flags are usually as referred to as black flags. At a distance, you couldn't really make out the specific symbols. When a witness got a proper, close-up look at a pirate flag, they might not have been too bothered to properly note the details or remember them. As mentioned in the introduction, the color was the most important part, the color of death and defiance against all nations, black. But if you're growing disappointed by the fact that Roberts might not have had so many flags after all, don't worry, we know for sure that he designed at least two, maybe three. However, they weren't as fanciful as a general history made them out to be. In 1722, the Evening Post recounted how Roberts entered the harbour of Trapassi, flying a black flag at the main topmast head, with a death's head and a cutlass in it. An earlier account further corroborated this flag, describing it as a death's head and a cutlass. Pretty neat flag, actually. It is the closest we have to a real description of the famous crossed swords flag, which is fake, by the way. Later, in 1720, Roberts attacked the harbour of Basseterre. When his crew pulled away, they left behind a message on the ship, a pirate flag inscribed in shock on the companionway hatch. According to a letter from William Matthew, the flag was a death's head and an arm with a cutlass. So what does this mean? Either the pirates that inscribed the flag just thought it was a symbol that looked cool, or it were the symbols on their black flag and was used as a calling card or identity of Robert's crew. Perhaps this flag was the same that they had flown at Trepassi, but earlier accounts had failed to mention the arm holding the sword and just mentioned the sword. Or it was a new, improved design. I think both look nice. Some say that Roberts might have borrowed the sword arm from the flag of Thomas II, but the Thomas II flag is another invention of the 20th century. On to the last black flag used by Roberts. More specifically, used aboard one of his concert ships, commanded by James Skirm. According to Captain Shaloner Ogle, the navy captain that defeated Skirm and Roberts, it was a black flag having a white skeleton in it. As mentioned before, Roberts flew numerous British national and naval flags. Skirm's ranger hoisted English colors in addition to their black flag. When Captain Ogle entered Cape Lopez to battle Roberts himself, he found the Royal Fortune flying an English ensign and jack, and a black pendant flying at her main topmast head, very similar to what the general history described Roberts as using at Widder. 
The trial records of Robert's crew describe the Rangers' flag further as Red English Ensign, a King's Jack, and a Dutch Pendant. A Dutch Pendant of red, white and blue, striped horizontally, would have been indistinguishable from a British naval pendant. So what flag did Bartholomew Roberts use? Aside from using a split splash of national colors, we know only for certain that he used a black flag with a skull and cutlass, and that his concert ship used a black flag with a skeleton. However, it is not too out of the question to imagine him as using the more fanciful flags described in the general history of the pirates. Due to how complicated they were, it is likely that no witness had time to properly assess them before they got robbed blind and beaten up. Last week I opened up my second YouTube channel, called Baltic Empire, where I will cover more broader history than just pirates, though with a focus on the medieval and early modern period. Since I know you guys like the naval scene, my first video covers a naval disaster, where a Swedish ship, which was essentially a floating palace, just exploded. Some say due to a curse. Check out the Baltic Empire in the video description below. Big thanks to my generous supporters over on Patreon. Cole Freer, Max Twick, 1660, Michael Jans, Rachel, Blunderbomb, Lockar, and Dyer. If you want to support me monetarily, please check out the links to PayPal and Patreon in the description below. This is what helps me fund my research and make better videos. Otherwise, please give the video a like and a comment so the algorithm will spread it to more potential viewers. And why not share it with a friend? Cheers.